double entendre basically it's jism from the band ism and when when did ism start uh ism started back in the early 80s um first um, release was like in 1982 wow and um so where'd you get the name the name the name um the name jism or the name ism well both actually but okay i was, ordained, I was ordained jism by my mother um and that um, the band ism actually ism is a state of being. Yeah. So. Um, but are there many isms, or is there one ism in particular that you think of when when you hear the word ism? Because so they like, isn't ism like almost like a a, a a suffix or a prefix? Like you can add it to the end of almost anything. Like yeah. John Lennon did that in the song "Give Peace a Chance," right? Yeah. So um, it's whatever you want it to be. So what What do you want Peace it to be? Ism? What do, I, what do I want it to be? Um, I just want it to be ism. Imagine all yeah, the... I don't, I don't want to add anything to it because I like to keep the name of the band simple. Yeah, that's cool because I just know that there's so many... Do you have a, do you have a ism that you're the best at? I got lots of isms. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. So many isms. There's so many, right? So what's ism up to now? Is it... We, um, there's, a new, there's a new unit of ism right now. Um, we um, were offered a tour of Europe, which um, has been postponed for like the third time. Uh, three's my lucky number. Yeah, I need to give some props up to um, the new members. Um, we have T.J. Gordon, one of the um, probably best guitar players. Yeah, he, he, he is probably, he could be like, a, he's definitely the top one. He's like the Brian May of like New York City. And... Um, Another, another um, his, a friend of ours, um, David Leitner, who is our bassist, and um, we are right now um, in the process of checking out another drummer. It's like the Spinal Tap of punk, and um, his name is Harvey Rubin, and we hope to have him on board um, sometime in the next um, few weeks or so. Do they so spontaneously combust? Is that why you gotta keep changing drummers? What was that? Do they spontaneously combust? What was that? So they spontaneously <laughs> combust I ism. I heard you the first time. Um, What'd you say? I, <laughs> I make the jokes around here. Um, I don't know what it is with drummers, man. I mean, it's just like um, a lot of bands seem to have problems with drummers. Um, I don't know what the problem is. I mean, it stemmed from the Beatles all the way up to, to ism, you know? I mean, so, I mean, I don't know what the problem problem is with these, um, these guys that, you know, like to hit things and then just, like, move on. But that's crazy. I can't explain. Well, it is the day. Um, you know, I did. I forgot to say this one. It's Captain Kangaroo's birthday. Um, oh. Bob, Bob Keeshan. Yeah. Right? Bob Keeshan. Did you ever watch Captain Kangaroo? Uh, no comment. Uh, Mr. Green I might have watched it. I might have watched it in reruns. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Green Jeans was his friend, right? Like, like you, you could be the Mr. Green Jeans. I grew, I grew up to be Mr. Green Jeans. I think you did, <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, I know, it's kind of funny. How'd you know his name was Bob Keeshan? I read a lot of newspapers. Really? So what'd you read in the newspaper today? Today I read about, I read about um, the, um, um, I forgot. I read about some Ferris wheel. Did you read story. about that? The Coney Island Ferris wheel. That was the, um, that's based on the um, English eye, right? And they're going to build a 600 foot, supposedly 600 foot, tall Ferris wheel in Staten Island, yeah, as opposed to the 420 foot Ferris wheel in, in London, England. Yeah. So I guess I, I, did read, I, I guess I did read something. So that Staten about Island it? will have something larger than the garbage dump finally? Yeah, exactly. Garbage so, dump by Charles Manson. Wait, so is that like us one-upping? I think um, I think the United States is upping in um, not only in Ferris wheels, but in um, a lot of other a lot of other, other aspects of life. Now why do you think we have to do that? Um, I don't think we have to do that. I just think um, the, um, the community board of Staten Island got together and said, let's, um, you know, let's make something, um, let's give Staten Island a name. Because Staten Island, I don't, guess, I don't think really does have a name. It gets crapped so, on. I'm from, from Staten Island, so we get crapped on, basically. Yeah, that's so, kind of so cool. I was the first, you, I, I was the first I've heard of it. Oh, so I'm like, I'm, look at that. I'm so really I'm, excited. Good. 
would. Oh, so you, so you would really want that for stand-up? I would, I would be online to be the first Where, Where'd you grow up? Me, um, from Bayside, Queens. So, so what do you do? Did you car race? Because I know people from Bayside, they used to race cars all the time. We, um, I don't know how many people here are from the suburbs of Manhattan. Like Bayside, Queens? Like, Mex like Mexico City. Yeah. Uh, we had, we had, um, we had like, um, these, um, trails where, you know, I had like a mini bike. And uh, Bayside has a lot of, um, there's a lot of interesting, um, there are some, are some, um, um, celebrities from Bayside, actually. Like you? Well, besides me, um, you said that, not me. Uh, W.C. Fields from Bayside. Wow, oh. really? W.C. Fields. Um, there's a, a pianist by the name of Claudio Rao from Bayside. Um, my piano teacher is from Bayside. Um, and the original band is from Bayside. Um, Anthrax is from Bayside. Wow. Are you a keyboardist? Or? Yes. I am a pianist. So do you have any gigs coming up with it? We are playing um, the Art Bar August 11th, and um, we're having a um, big show at Tompkins Square Park on the 22nd of September, which is my birthday. Really? So is that going to be like a birthday party? It's going to be a birthday, real sick, sick-ass birthday party on Saturday, September 22nd at Tompkins Square Park, and we have um, Iconicide is on the bill. I think Mongrel, Mongrel Bitch is playing, um, a bunch of other people, and it's going to be, um, it's going to be a good time. Like Hopefully, the, the weather will keep up. More well, weather will, you know. Oh, it usually does. September is usually fine. Well, we'll pray. We'll pray on the Jewish holidays for like good weather. Well, do you know when they come? Rosh Hashanah falls out. I'm not sure. I was born on Rosh Hashanah. Oh really? Just on September twenty second. Does it happen a lot? There's a song in that. Pardon me? Does what happen a lot? Rosh Hashanah is on your birthday. Like I know people that have well, their birthday. Around, comes around once a year. That's a lot. I mean. <laughs> your birthday does, but it doesn't always coincide with that holiday. Well, not really. I mean the um the, the um the dates change. Yeah. You know, in accordance to the um the calendar. Of course. Like you know, I know people that like have their birthdays on Thanksgiving every like X amount of years. Like I know people that just had their birthday on Father's Day. And they said it happens like every seven years or something. Then there's a leap year and it skips or something. Yeah, like yeah. When's your birthday? April thirtieth. Okay, so no holidays fall on that. Yeah, there is actually. Like what? It's a high Celtic holiday of Beltane. Belting? Beltane. What? Beltane. 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 What's that? Like a lighter? It's, it's the springtime equivalent of uh, Halloween. Really? Yeah. Are you serious? I'm not joking. People dress up and stuff? It's May Eve. You know, May well, Eve? What they used to do is they used to bring the cattle down from the hills. Do they do it in Staten Island? No, but <laughs> it's forgotten about. But it used to be a big fertility um, so, holiday. So what? I mean, if you go on the calendar, then you see every day has something. Some of these calendars have, um, you know, in italics, a small bit. Yeah, like today is National Indian Pudding Day. and. And, and and I need a skeleton from your closet so you can have everyone. some National Indian Pudding Day. I don't want a skeleton in my closet, but we have a new song called Whore in Your Closet. And what's it about? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll recite the lyrics for you. It's based yeah, yeah, yeah. on a poem that I wrote a few years ago. Whore in My Closet? It's called Whore in Your Closet. It's, it's, gonna be, it's a new song from ISM, which I'm here to promote. And it goes like this. There is a rhythm to the woo woo way you walk. A certain credo you attest to, though you're invisible and wear a uniform, that doesn't mean I never met you. You've got a whore in your closet, oh yeah. You've got a whore in your closet, oh yeah. Some kind of counterbalance justify your dues, that doesn't mean you didn't want it. A cup of arrogance will put you into view and make you eager just to flaunt it. You've got a whore in your closet, oh yeah. You've got a whore living right in your closet, oh yeah. Wow, yeah. so have a little... Words of wisdom. So is that a dream for you? Is what a dream? This, a this is a dream right here. Uh, to have a whore in your closet? Whores, plural. So do, do you want to wake up every day to that? Honey, it would be we don't want to get into that right now. Let me just eat my pudding. This this is kind of this kind of reminds me of... You have your pudding in yeah, too. Yeah, this kind of reminds me of a little of what happened. Then you got it. 
It drips, but that's okay. That's okay. This is you double dip, dude. It does. It, that does remind what? me. Do I double dip? You double that's dip. That's okay. That's another story. Yeah, we don't mind. So that, that, that does remind me of a horror in your closet, now that you mention it. It tastes a little bit. No, it tastes better than the horror yeah, I really in your closet. That. Not necessarily. But horror is a metaphor. For? For whatever you want it to be. It doesn't necessarily have to be a horror. Horror, you know? I mean, when... When Axl Rose used the word nigger in whatever song he used it in, it wasn't applicable to black people. It was just, you know, a nigger. Yeah. So we're getting a little okay. bit... Is that okay here? Am I allowed to say that on national youth stream TV? Well, you're quoting Axl, so, I mean... Yeah, but I'm, I'm actually... Well, I have, a good, I have a good attorney, so... Oh, do you? I, I don't know. It's kind of interesting yeah, how I'm words are, but, like, good. you know, you know, a whore in your closet. What, what would yours look like? Uh, changes on a daily basis. I mean, I like the Sarah Palin look myself. Interesting. You know, naughty librarian. That's a Pardon me? Naughty librarian. Um, yeah, I guess naughty librarian or, nor or naughty whatever. Well, I teacher, mean, a pl like plain Jane type of um, girl, you know. Is it, is it the glasses? Is it something about the glasses? Yeah, it, actually, it is the glasses. It's the glasses combined with... Um, the innocence and the, um, you know, yeah, the it's funny because like when you see some, when you see a lot of people, you see them, you know, and then like, oh my God, this person must be into that type of look. But I mean, I actually see a lot of beautiful girls with these guys that are just like horrendous looking. You know, they walk around with these sandals, they're like overweight. You know, offense to overweight people. I don't think they're already in this, in this well, room. All peeled off a couple like of so already see, now. You see all these beautiful girls, and like they're with these, and then it's like you see these guys, and they're with the complete opposite. You know, I guess opposite. Maybe they're not judging books by their covers. Maybe they're they're actually liking the people for like for who they. Oh, they're judging by their. They haven't peeled off their layers yet, so they're yeah, not but, really aware. Well, yeah, but I mean, you know, the question was what kind of you know, yeah. look, but that's you know. Um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, um, Do you I'm, have a I'm not Chuck Woolery, girlfriends. Uh, I mean, I'm not Chuck, no, no nobody's Woolery. serious right, right. now. I mean, uh, well, that's another story. That is another story, so maybe you'll come back and share it. I'm unmarried, I've never been married, and I don't have any kids that I know of. I know, exactly. So Only the okay. women know, for sure. So that's, that's 45 minutes, 45 minutes stands. There you go, there you go. So, um, what's your website? How can people check out your music? Um, interesting story, interesting question. Um, right now, the um, old website, which is, I believe, operated by, um, I guess you'd call him our former manager or manager. Um, it's um, Isn't Punk at, um, what is it? Yeah, Isn't Punk at um, Facebook. Uh, Facebook. What is it? Is it? Ooh, I think your Facebook you said you have a drama about. What do you mean? I don't know. You said something like that. That something is. Oh yeah, that was that was um, pertaining to our a friend of mine who managed the band for many years. But there's some changes that have been made right now, and um, unbeknownst to both of us, um, we shall see what happens. Uh, we were supposed to have Alan was supposed to set up a nice um, Facebook for us. Alan Rand, the um, infamous photographer who's um, been taking photos, some great photos of us. Um, Alan's my cousin. He's the best. Yes. I love you, Alan. Good. And he yeah, so he's, he's, he's he posted that picture. Pardon you, me? You're on Reverb Nation or any of those little sites we can look for you? No, we're not really. I mean, you can not really. We're more street. You know, we kind of, right now, we're more street. It's like, you know, we're doing this show at Tompkins Square Park as opposed to playing clubs. You know, we like to just kind of keep things, um, um, just, you know, street. That sounds good. So I, I thank you. Any last shout outs? It's good to see you. And did you want to just say the t shirt means something? Oh, yeah. oh no, this t shirt. Um, this t shirt is a great band, from also from Bayside. All right. Um, I want to give a shout out to um, Kip Elbaum. I love Kip. Who's, you been, Kip. who's been behind us um, since um, like our first rehearsal about nice. eight or nine months ago. Really good guy. I've known him a long time. And he's done a lot of great things for us, and um, hopefully he'll continue to do so. It's his birthday on the 11th of August. Okay, so that first gig. Right, we're doing a special you know, show for him um, on that date, and then it's a Tompkins Square Park gig, and 
you know, we'll see what happens after that. Sounds great. Thank you so much for coming, Jism. Thank yeah. you. And um, next Wednesday is July 4th, and it's No Future's birthday, the roadie of the show. Yeah, so we got a whole week planned next week. Monday, July 2nd, we're having a party here for Ruin Who at Otto Shrunken Head. Come down. It's going to be a celebration. Wednesday, we're playing Bowery Electric yeah. with the Rue and Who crew band. We have never played as a band before. We are forming as a band. All of us are musicians who work on this show, and we are going to start playing together as well, where your band is playing that night, too, at Bowery yeah, Electric. Yeah, we, uh, we warm up the room for you. Aww. We go on at 8. And Alan Merrill is playing at, that night oh, as well. I love, yeah. I love rock and roll. I love rock and roll. It's going to be a great night. That's July 3rd. I'll, so I'll next be, I'll week, be there. Yay. So the 2nd, the 3rd, the 4th, we're having a lot of Ruin Who next week. So stick around for this day to continue the last Wednesday of June. And then July, we're firecrackering it up. And it's my birthday that week. Yeah. All right, we'll be yeah. right back. Yeah, <laughs> with more. Wish that you were glad you suck. I wish we'd just.